first time I heard about toxic masculinity, I had no idea what it meant. <coughs> then I started hearing examples and definitions, and it dawned on me. I was indeed familiar with toxic masculinity. I just knew it by a different name. To me, it was simply called masculinity. Calling it toxic is like saying illegal crime. <laughs> of course it's illegal, it's a crime. Well, in my experience, any attempt to define masculinity on behalf of others is toxic. Period. You'll never hear me talk about what a real man ought to do. I can only speak for myself and do what I feel is right in my own heart. And if that doesn't happen to fit into other people's definitions of masculinity, I could care less. Unfortunately, this wasn't always the case for me. In my youth, I worked tirelessly to cultivate an image of stereotypical manhood. The quintessential tough guy slash womanizer, you know, emotionally stunted, incapable of displaying vulnerability, and so on. So what caused my masculinity to go into detox? <laughs> That's a legitimate question. I think witnessing my wife's transformation from mere mortal to life-giving goddess played a pivotal part. <laughs> Supporting her through the birth of our children and parenting alongside this remarkable woman only deepened my awe and admiration for qualities I had previously considered unmanly. Now this caused a tremendous shift in my perspective. Over the following years, I found myself opening up to the repressed feminine within. I became more nurturing, more empathetic, and less concerned with what a real man should and shouldn't do. Now, this process culminated after the birth of my son. I remember clearly the moment I became aware of this alchemical transformation, this fusing together of masculine and feminine into a singular dynamic whole. Cyrus, my son, had woken up crying in the middle of the night, as children are wont to do, and I was now holding him in my arms, chest to chest, swaying gently. His breathing slowed, his head came to rest on my shoulder, and he drifted into blissful sleep. Now usually I would just go back to bed, but I found myself standing there with him in my arms for a really long time, just holding him and feeling his little heart beat against mine, and I was overwhelmed. The separation between my son and I dissolved in that moment. We became one, and I thought, this is what motherhood must feel like. <laughs> this realization didn't spark shame or embarrassment, and to the contrary, my manhood had never felt more secure. I felt blessed to experience a sample of what my wife feels on a daily basis. So to cure my toxic masculinity, I had to embrace the feminine in me. How's that for poetic justice? <laughs>